Welcome to Mantra Breathing today. We're so happy to have all of you with us, breathing with us, uh, stating your highest intention, your spiritual intention, your good intention, and then we all get behind that and breathing together, we manifest that intention. The energy of the group helps us manifest more easily uh, our highest thoughts. So one of the highest thoughts I think in the in the universe, and it's made very clear um, by the Course in Miracles, is that God's will for us is perfect happiness. There's a lesson 101. God's will for me is perfect happiness. This is this is like um, divine will. And like, even if you're not so close to that word God, and maybe you're kind of agnostic, or maybe you haven't fully embraced that, that word, just think of it as life, you know, the life force. And the life force is something always there, always teeming, always expressing, always creating, always extending. So just say, the life force's will for me is perfect happiness. So your purpose in life is to be happy. Your purpose in life is to be uh, in that flow, in that flow of joy, in that flow of feeling good, in that flow of actually not having problems. Not to say that we don't face problems in our everyday life, we do. We all have little things that come up that we have to handle, but it's how we handle them and how fast can we get through them and resolve them. So we have a saying in our work, always go for solution, which means go for quick resolution of any conflict, any problem, any, any glitch, in your life so that you can return to that problem-free state of perfect happiness. Perfect happiness is, is our goal. It's our goal for this breathe. It's our goal for the spiritual work we do on ourselves, And it's our goal for life. You know, we listened to uh, this very brilliant teacher, Esther Hicks. Some of you probably have listened to her and one of the things she says which we think is pretty right on is your purpose in life is to feel good <laughs> and it's such a simple statement um but ask yourself it's like how much of my day what percentage of my day do i really feel good you know is it is it 20 percent? is it 50 percent is it 75%, 80%? How much of your day are you actually feeling good? How much of your day are you actually feeling perfect happiness? Because this is God's will for us. This is God's will for us. Now, I think the next thing I wanted to talk about, and I think I called this mantra breathe today, you are happiness and i think if we could see this it would be much easier for us to maintain this state of being of happiness when we see that we ourselves are happiness the nature of our true being is happiness and i i got a little closer to that realization through a few lessons in the Course in Miracles that are very clear, and I wanted to share them with you today as my part of this talk. Well, there are a couple lessons that say, love created me like itself. Love created me like itself. That's lesson 67. And then there's another lesson, 229, that says, love which created me is what I am. All right, so we have to see from those lessons that the essence of who we are, you know, when you boil it down and you distill it down, 
and you want to come to know your self identity it's like who are you it's very simple love is who you are love created you and love extended itself in that creation so that your very being reflects and is that which created you so love created you like itself love which created me as what i am so it's just simple you are love you are love now in the aspects of what love is there were a couple other lessons that made something very clear now after it says god god's will for me is perfect happiness it, there's another lesson that says god being love is also happiness okay god is love and the nature of that love is joy perfect happiness would be joy we call that joy or perfect joy or pure joy so the nature of happiness is the nature of love and god is love and love is happiness so now let's take it back a step if love created me like itself and i am love then it would follow that i have to be happiness that's also a statement of self identity happiness is who i am so when i'm not happy i'm not being who i am i'm not being my true self i'm being an alternative self i'm being a uh, an ego self right so the more we give up that ego self the more we let go of our fear anger guilt resentment attack thoughts you know all that stuff that keeps us feeling bad it's our job to let all that go we have to see oh, it was just a mistake we made and we can correct the mistake and when we let that go we get closer and closer back to our essence back to our being our pure being back to our self identity who we are and who we are is love and then from that who we are as love the nature of love is happiness so we are happiness and that's our responsibility so then it gets back to what esther hicks said your main purpose in life is to feel good <laughs> which would be feel happy feel joyful be joy be happiness extend that happiness outward you're going to make everybody else happy by being who you are as god created you which is happy god's will for me is perfect happiness when you're doing that will you are doing who you are as god created you and the result has to be happiness so you can apply that to any aspect of your life that quotient and if if it's not happy then you just say God being love is also happiness and God is still love and this is not his will. You just say it simply. This is not his will. So I had a little healing yesterday. We haven't been outside cuz it's been snowing. And uh I had to walk up to the FedEx to get some printed stuff actually for our next training, happiness and longevity. I had to print the scripts out and I had to walk up to get them. So I'm walking up there. I haven't been outside walking for a while, and I'm feeling this pain in my hip, my my right hip, right? So I'm I'm walking and I'm looking at that and I'm saying to the pain, God is still love and this is not his will. So anything in your life that's that's not happiness, if it's pain, it's a problem, it's a conflict, you have to apply that to it in your mind you say well this is not god's will for me it's still god is still love i am still love and this is not god's will and that's all you need to say to it 
Well, so I walked all the way up there to the FedEx. It was about a mile and a half, and I had this pain in my hip, and I'm saying the whole time, God is still love, and this is not his will. And so on the way back from the FedEx, I had no pain in my hip. So don't underestimate the power of your mind to, to redirect things that are happening in your life or to heal things that are happening in your life. But you have to be vigilant to do that. You're responsible for your own happiness. Other people are responsible for theirs. And if you're experiencing something that's not happy, you have to correct it. You have to direct those thoughts to that problem to resolve it. So I had this kind of miracle, little miracle demonstration yesterday when I was applying that. God is still love and this is not his will. And God's will for me is perfect happiness, which means perfect hips that have no pain. And I got the result and it didn't take long for me to get the result. So that's my little contribution today. And now we're going to have Sandra Ray say a few things. And then after that, we'll put on the mantra. So Sandra Ray, mm -hmm. would you like to come now? Yeah. All righty then. I introduce to you Sandra Ray. <laughs> Everybody lying down? Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, start breathing deeper. Uh, for me, one of the things I'm looking at is um, how the death urge keeps you from being happy. And the death urge is all your programming on death that you got from your family and from religion and your belief systems. And the belief in death is inevitable. You know, everyone thinks death is inevitable, therefore you can't do anything about it. They don't, nobody gets that that's a thought that you could change. So I'm going around saying life is inevitable. <laughs> yeah, so nobody gives up the thought that is inevitable. And so they're programming themselves to die. Also, the belief you're separate from God is your death urge. Your personal lie, your worst thought about yourself is your death urge. All your anti-life thoughts. So all these things make you depressed and they keep you from being happy. So I know the more I work out my death urge, the happier I am. And this takes some time because I'm convinced that the death urge is an addiction. Everybody's addicted to dying and reincarnating and dying and reincarnating. However, our real job is to have a Christed body and to <clears throat> live as long as we choose while serving humanity. So I think if you really want to give over, get over depression and be happy, you have to work out your death urge. And that's a whole long subject. We've written books on that. And it's something for you to think about seriously. Whenever you're not happy, maybe your death urge is coming up. And I'm convinced that every time we have a problem in our body, a sickness, it's part of our death urge. So even the Course in Miracles says when you have pain or disease, you're trying to kill God. <laughs> so, you know, and the Course in Miracles does not promote death. I was really happy to know that. So I'm here to tell you, breathe out this thought, death is inevitable and let it go and you'll be happier and happier because life is God and God is happiness. Now, the Course says also, if you see your happiness <clears throat> as ever changing, now this, now that, then you're really deciding against happiness. Um, in other words, you think, well, sometimes I'm happy and then sometimes I'm not, and it changes depending on outside circumstances. No, that isn't real happiness. It has to be constant happiness to be real happiness constant happiness so think when you think about happiness put the word constant before it because that's what the course is talking about constant happiness is what's real not happiness that comes and goes and changes according to external situations uh, also the course says don't be content with future happiness 
Oh, someday I'll be happy when? No, the Holy Spirit's purpose now is yours. And of course, says, should not his happiness be yours as well? Of course, the Holy Spirit is in constant happiness. And by the way, happiness comes from choosing to be free of guilt. If you have any guilt, it's going to wipe out your happiness. Well, also will anger and fear wipe out your happiness. But for sure, if you haven't worked out your guilt, that's going to ruin your happiness because guilt demands punishment. So anytime you have guilt about anything, you're going to punish yourself somehow with an illness or a loss or whatever, trauma. And guilt will give you some punishment and that is the opposite of happiness. So the last thing I'm going to clo close with is it says, I read this today in the course, the Holy Spirit alone can keep you holy, joyous. So if you want to be joyous, holy all the time, you have to be connected one with the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit is your friend. It's always available to help you. And the reason people don't rely on the Holy Spirit is they never were trained to do that. And it's too simple. People think, well, I can't, you know, that's too easy. Just to rely on the Holy Spirit is too easy, so I'm not going to do it. It can't possibly work when it's that easy. <laughs> so that's the Course in Miracles says that's our problem, is we don't rely on the Holy Spirit because, you know, we think, well, that's too easy. It couldn't work. So I hope that's enough for you today. And I'm wanting you to start breathing very deep now. Inhale happiness. Exhale anything unlike happiness. I choose happiness. That was wonderful, you guys. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Just want you to remember that happiness, love, God, and your self-identity go together. You are happiness. And you can access that anytime. And also the happiness can correct anything in your life. There's a lesson that says, let me be still and listen to the truth. Truth will correct all errors in my mind. And then what's the truth? The truth is God's peace and joy are mine. So it's the peace and the joy and the happiness that corrects the errors. It's, it's not some other secret formula, that's it. You have to decide for happiness. That's what seeing it differently is. I'm determined to see things differently. Above all else, I want to see. Well, what is it I want to see? I want to see my own happiness. And that can help you correct anything, right any wrong, rebalance any imbalance. Just remember that is all you need. God's will for me is perfect happiness, and I already have it. I just have to connect with it. So thank you so much for being here. And next week, um, we'll probably be talking about the theme of longevity because we're getting ready for this happiness and longevity training uh, on the 16th of February. You're all invited. Some of you have already signed up, and we hope a few more of you will come. Um, that's on the 16th, 17th, and 18th, uh, and we'll be putting that out more in the next couple of weeks. So um, next week, we'll be talking about longevity on the uh, month of breathe. So see you then, and write to us during the week. We always answer. You can write to us on WhatsApp. You can write to us uh, if you're in the uh, mantra breathing WhatsApp group, you can write to us there. Um, you can send us an email, sandra at sandra.com and invite your friends to mantra breathing. Friends can come. Yeah. God, God bless.
All right. See ya.